Hey guys, welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 here on GM Games with the Colorado Rockies. My name is Aaron and I run the Around the World Sports Channel on YouTube. Uh, we are uh, having, I don't want to say having a down year, because I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that, 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 we've, that we've been playing poorly, but certainly compared to last year where we won 99 games, it hasn't been... Hasn't been nearly as good a season. Uh, we need to go 40 and 10 over the last 50 games to, to get to where we were a year ago. Um, it's been all about our pitching. Our pitching has not been very good. I mean, as expected as the Rockies, but uh, I expected more out of what we are getting. Um, yeah, so the plan for this episode is to play through to the end of the regular season. Hopefully, there will be a postseason game that I can play here before the episode ends. We'll just sort of see what happens. Uh, we have our new look middle infield, uh, or at least a portion of it here is Zach McKinstry in at second base. Picked up Nick Ahmed at the trade deadline. He will slide in at shortstop as he is a very, very good defensive shortstop. And we also picked up Isaiah Kiner Falefa uh, with Texas eating the entirety of his contract for this year and next uh which as i think about it could end up being a real positive for us because financially we're not in great shape our our salary our payroll jumps up to a potential 160 million dollars next year and one of those contracts is zach mckinstry who uh, at 30 years old could be demanding upwards of eight million dollars in arbitration so we could move on from mckinstry and slide Kiner Falefa in at second base and not lose a beat defensively. We also have Angel Janau, uh, who can step in, and he's not nearly as good defensively, but he's got a really solid bat. So, but that's a decision for uh, another time. Uh, today is just about trying to grind through these next two months and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully making the postseason. Um, we're currently. In the wild card, we are two games up on the Mets, three games up on the Giants, four games up on the Marlins. Um, but it's really, you know, these five or six teams battling for this last spot as we are 13 games behind the Padres. So it's five or six teams battling for one one spot. So let's uh, let's see how August goes as we start off with two games at San Diego. Game number one, we got Tyler Glass now going. And we lose seven to six. So we start off. We we start. We're starting off right where we left off at the last episode. And do we get swept? We do. Uh, we give up seven runs and nine runs. We are now fifty nine and fifty two. Uh, now one game up. So this is this is not going the right way. Um, hopefully we can have a strong uh, strong run here down the stretch. But so far not good. So far not good at all. Ottoman doesn't want to resign because we offered him a minor league contract. That's fine. And we're taking on Miami here for three and then Oklahoma City. So hopefully we can pick up some wins here. Joe Adele's recovery is unclear. That's a bit of a problem. It would be nice to get him back sooner rather than later. And let's see how this series against Miami goes. Oh, we lose again. And Enrique Hernandez is still suffering from a concussion. So uh, we've signed most of our minor league free agents, which is fine. So we've now lost three in a row. I'm not even going to look at the standings yet. I'm just going to wait until we get up probably to here and then take a look. Uh, I just hopefully we can win some games. Nope. And we just keep losing. We just keep right on losing. And I don't know what to do. Hey, a win. 60 and 54, Ramirez 3 for 4, a couple of RBIs, looks like Gallo homered. Lighter picks up the win going 8, each eight, eight really solid innings. So, uh, all right, well, we are 1 and what, 5 in this episode, 1 and 6, 1 and 4. All right, so we have three games against Oklahoma City. These are games we need to win. These are all play. Okay. I don't I no. It's telling me all of the players that aren't interested in re-signing minor league contracts. Can we win game one against Oklahoma City? Nope. Those are games we cannot afford to lose. One and five this month. There we go. Two and five. There's a victory. Isaiah kiner Falefa goes four for five. Ramirez with another couple hits. Nick Ahmed goes three for three. Lazardo picks up his first win with us. All right, screw it. I'm going to look. Are we in first? Are we still in uh, the wild card? 
Nope, we're behind the Mets by a game. Okay. Well, I mean, that was going to happen. You keep losing friggin' games and uh, and and uh, you drop out of it. So we are a game out of the wild card. And we lose two out of three to a really, really bad Oklahoma City team. Uh, 41 and 76. Uh, we're three and seven in our last 10. Five games over 500. Um, I, is, are we going to end up falling apart here I mean we need a significant winning streak another loss and we lose Jose Ramirez for seven weeks wonderful so we're without Adele we're without three of our, our starters in uh, so far uh, right now we do pick up the win but without Ramirez I don't think it's going to matter a whole hell of a lot um, so I guess we can call uh, Ataman back up and what do we do from here? We put Kiner Falefa in at third base, I guess. I, I mean, you know, it happens, I guess, right? We take a step backwards, and uh, hopefully, ne- hopefully, we we learn from it and we we move forward next year. So we're sixty-two and fifty-seven. We are without our best hitter. Um, yeah, and we'll just keep going. See if we can go on a hot streak. Which we haven't shown any indication we're capable of doing, but we'll see. Another loss. Jamison Hanna gets hurt, or is back from injury. And we're going to send Mark Canna down. Oh, and Adele's back too. Good. Okay. So we can send Drew Jones back down, who actually played relatively well. So we get Adele and Hanna back on the same day. So that's that's a good thing. It lengthens the lineup a bit here. But we just lost two. We've literally we've lost two out of three in every series so far this uh, this month. And again, it's it's not our offense. It's not even really our pitching. I mean, a lot of these games, our pitching hasn't been terrible. Um, it hasn't been great, but it hasn't been terrible. We have the best offense. Yeah, it just it's it's not going well. So, all right, well let's keep going. We need some sort of streak here. We've only won three games this month. Oh, good. Hernandez is back. Ottoman can go back down. We just keep. I we just keep losing. I mean, I the, the, the decision. I, what do I do? What do I do? Because I'm not going to take Lazardo out of this out of the rotation. We, we we traded for him to to improve the rotation. The rest of the rotation, frankly, hasn't been bad. So I don't know what the problem is here. I don't I don't know what to do to make this better. I don't know what to do to make this better. All right, let's just get Kike back in the. This is really disappointing because I was I was hoping I was hoping to play a playoff game in this episode. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. So against lefties, Enrique Hernandez comes back in at second base, uh, as he is still a very good um, batter against lefties, uh, and we'll see if that makes any difference. We need like one of those you know ten game winning streaks or eight game winning streaks. Hey, we finally win. We are three and, and this is crazy. I mean, you just look at May and June, 35 and 19 in May and June. But since that 35 and 19 stretch, we're 15 and 27. Yeah, I mean, we're bad in one run games. We're bad on the road, which is weird because our pitching is really good. So I would think that we would be fine on the road, but it's not the case. All right, so we win against Washington. Drew Romo. Three RBIs, Joey Gallo, two hits, three runs scored. Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed's played really well since we picked him up. 349. Um, done four unearned runs in five innings. Bullpen came on. We gave we committed four errors and still won the game. <sighs> Alright, can we take two out of three? Can we win our first series of the month? Please. We do. We win 6 nothing. so a two-game winning streak. Clark Schmidt improves to 12-4, and four, and he's another one who is going to cost a lot of money next year. His ARB estimate's over $10 million. 
Uh, but with how well he's pitching, it's almost worth it. All right, so we got Milwaukee. Three games in Milwaukee, followed by three against Philadelphia. So Milwaukee, 59 and 64, Philadelphia 50. So we've got two teams that are under 500. We're only two games out of the wild card. So, I mean, all's not lost. We just have to start playing better, you know, to sound obvious. We lose 9-6, to six, so that ends that two-game winning streak. We lose 5-2, to two, and we... What happens in the final game? All right, yeah, that makes sense. So we get swept by Milwaukee. Two games over 500. Three games at Philadelphia. Another loss. Another loss. Schmidt picks up another win. Gallo hits his 30th. McKinstry hits his 9th. I, I really, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. Our defense, defensive efficiency is terrible. Our zone rating is 10th. We've made 81 errors. But again, I don't understand how. Uh, defensively, we have some really, really good ratings on our team. But it's just not happening. I don't know. We're three games out. I mean, Justin Dunn's got his ERA down under four. Schmidt's under three. Letters under five. Lazardo's been really bad since coming over. But the rest of our starters have been fine. And really, our bullpen, like, I mean, ERAs are a bit high, I think. But, I mean, Diaz has been really good. Dominguez has been, he struck out 84 in 52 innings. Detmer's kind of fallen apart since the beginning of the year. Guess hasn't been very good. I don't know. At this point, there's nothing I can do about the bullpen. I spent a ton of money on it, and I thought things were going the right way. Uh, apparently, I was wrong. So we'll just get to the end of the month. We'll look at stats, and then we'll keep going. So game three against Philadelphia. Can we take the series? Oh, it's going to go to the 22nd first. Can we take the series? We do. We win eight to six. So uh, we've won two in a row uh, for the second time this month. Uh, who pitched? Lighter pitched, picks up his 10th win of the year. Ahmed homers, Zach McKinstry homers. Diaz picks up the save. Kind of Falefa, two hits and an RBI. Ahmed, three hits and an RBI. Lighter helped his own cause with two runs knocked in. He's been good defensively for us. Really good efficiency, good zone rating through 19 games. So I feel like we solidified the defense at the trade deadline, but I guess it doesn't matter. It feels like there's an inherent inherent nonsense built into all Colorado pitchers. Like it doesn't matter how good your pitching staff is. They simply aren't going to pitch well. I don't know. So we got three games now at St. Louis. Can we win three in a row? Nope. We lose three to two and 11. Two to nothing in ten. So we get swept again. I I don't get it. I just don't get it. And it's really frustrating because I, this team was built. This team was built for this year. And we're four games out of a wild card now. Three and seven in our last ten. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Or any thoughts as to the, the mess that was here, I, I don't really know. So we got three games against the Mets. This is really going to make or break us. If we get swept, we're like seven games out of a wild card. If we sweep, we're right back in it. So let's see what happens. And we lose the first game. Of course we do. What happens in game two is we've now lost four in a row. Five in a row. And we win one out of three, which puts us, what, six games out of a wild card? Five out of a, yeah, we're five out of the wild card. We are now under 500. Under 500. We won 99 games a year ago. We are now under 500, and that's going to cause a huge hit to our budget next season, which is already going up by $25 million. So this couldn't have gone worse. Um, even if we ended up making the playoffs and getting knocked out in the first round, at least we would be in a position where we could say we made the playoffs back-to-back -back seasons. Now we're going to end up right around 500, and we're going to take a hit, which means some of these contracts are going to have to go next year. Uh, it's not what I want, but it is what it is, I guess. 
All right, so we take on DeGrom. He's going to beat us for like the 12th time this year. Let's see. Let's watch. 67 and 69. Yep. We lose again. <clears throat> Romo, Adele, and Gallo all homer. Doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter anymore. At this point, I just want to get through the season. I'm going to lose again. Let's go ahead and finish the season with... Yep. So we finished that month... Eight and twenty, solid. So we went thirty-five and nineteen, and we followed up with a nineteen and thirty-eight. So there you go, good, nice job, guys. Nice job. <sighs> yeah, we're six games out of a wild card. It's it's all but over for us at this point. Um, so we can call up a couple of players. So I think we call up. Call up Jackson Bennett, and we'll call up McCarty. We'll get a couple of new pitchers up there and see if that makes any difference at all. Um, Guess is going to go to avoid high leverage. We're going to make Bennett a middle reliever. We're going to make McCarty. Um, I guess we'll make him a middle reliever as well. What happened? Are you kidding me with this? Really, this is what happens with Edwin Diaz. Really, last year with Collar with Boston, uh, eleven earned runs in fifty nine innings. He gave up six, eight, eleven earned runs in his last five games with us. I, I'm re- I'm beginning to think that there's some sort of built in. If you pitch for the Rockies, it doesn't matter what your ratings are, you're not going to be very good. Nonsense. Uh, if we look at our pitching staff, and you can't really, again, you can't really use war. Um, I mean, I guess look at FIP. Um, I don't really know what to look at, to be honest with you, because Clark Schmidt's had a great year. Uh, I think he's, um, you know, he's been one of the best pitchers in the major leagues, I think, especially given where he pitches with his 151 ERA+. plus. Justin Dunn. Uh, ERA is down to almost four. He's had a really nice bounce back uh, second half of the season. Leiter's had a better second year than he had uh, uh, in his first full campaign. Oh, well, actually, maybe he hasn't. He's on pace for basically the same record in the same line. So he's been down a little bit. Glasnow has been, I, ultimately, he's right in line with where he's been. Um, Lazardo's been bad since coming over one and three with a 5 3 5. 49 hits and 38. I don't know. Uh, Detmers was just absolutely lights out at the beginning of the season. He remembers April 15 innings, three hits, 29 strikeouts. Well, in August, he gave up. He's gone from an ERA of 0 to 318 to 432 to 606 to 9. So uh, he just got worse and worse and worse and worse every single month. Um, Gonsolin has actually been really good since coming over. 25 innings, 35 strikeouts, 2 0 with a 144. Uh, that means next year he's gonna probably gonna put up a six six and a half ERA. Uh, Diaz has been bad as our closer. Dominguez has been okay. Um, he got off to a, a rough start, but has sort of bounced back nicely here. Uh, June and August were were pretty good months for him. Ben Guess has struggled. Uh, I'm thinking about just putting him in the rotation and just calling it a day. And just whatever happens happens. Um, He's given up 13 home runs and 60. He's given up too many home runs, 13 home runs and 62 innings, striking out a lot. Uh, the BABIP is high, but I don't, I don't know what else to do. And I keep saying that because that's the reality. And then uh, Medina and Doyle have both been, you know, okay, I guess. Uh, lineup wise, and I'm sorry if I sound frustrated. I just, I am. I was expecting big things from this team this year. Uh, Veen having a great year. Wesniak having a great rookie campaign. Is Veen on pace for 50? 44. Okay. Uh, Wesniak's got 29 home runs as a rookie. Um, McKinstry's having a really ni- another another really nice year, but again, that may be this may be it for him. He may price himself out of our um, out of our uh, uh, our I guess out of our price point. Um, hang on just a second, guys. Okay. All right. It's September 1st. Um, yeah. And we're just going to try to plow through the rest of the season. 
Uh, it looks like the episode's probably going to be a little shorter than I had anticipated because I don't suspect we're going to make the playoffs. Uh, if we have some sort of huge run here in uh, in September, you know, great, but I'm not counting on it. So let's uh, let's just keep rolling. So we got the Dodgers followed by three games at Arizona. And we win. We won the first game of the month. Look at that. Schmidt pitched well. Doyle got lit up. Uh, but we were able to come back from that and win. So that's fine. Uh, three games at Arizona now. Another win. A 5-2 victory. Jack Leiter pitches and picks up the win. McKinstry gets on base five times. Joe Adele, two for five. It's a home run. It's 22nd. Lighter goes seven. Cool. So two wins in a row. That is what is known as a winning streak as we try to win three in a row. And we lose six to four. Yeah, we need to go. Let's see this. So we were at 140 games, so we have 22 games left. I mean, we probably need to go what 18 and four, something like that, in the last 22 to to, to really have a shot. And we win. So we win three out of four starting this month. Too little, too late, unfortunately, but uh, still not terrible. Lizardo picks up the win. Bullpen does okay. Three. Three games now at home against Cincinnati. Come on. Another win, 6-1 to one this time. So a bit of a hot streak to start September. Three-run home run for Zach Veen. Apostle homers. Gallo goes yard. Dunn strikes out 11 in 7 and a third. Picks up his seventh win of the year. I'm going to save it before it crashes, although I might want it to crash and start all over. Get back to the start of August and hope for a hot streak. Yeah, and there's obviously there's just not a lot we can do at this point. I mean, it's it's if it's not one pitch or it's another, you know, like we're not gonna take Edwin Diaz out of the closer role and you know and stick Jackson Bennett in there because Bennett's pitching well right now. It's just that that's not how this team is constituted. Edwin Diaz is the closer, and he just had an absolutely awful stretch that cost us like five games. Literally four losses and a blown save. So um, yeah, it just you just gotta try to kind of grind through it. So here we go. Second game against Cincinnati is another win. So five out of six this month. Clark Schmidt picks up the win. Enrique Hernandez goes three for four, homers and doubles. Schmidt goes five, improves to fourteen and four. Diaz picks up his 30th save. What does that do for the standings? We are now two, just two games out of the wild card. Two games behind the Marlins and Mets. Uh, do we have the Marlins and Mets on our schedule this month? Yeah, we got the Marlins. No more Mets, but uh, we got three more games against San Diego, which are the ones I'm afraid of. I assume we're just going to get swept here. But we've got Cincinnati followed by three at Atlanta. So can we sweep the Reds? We do. We win 10 to 3. Lighter with another blister. That's his third blister of the year, I think. Four runs knocked in for Ahmed, two for Hannah. Jack Lighter drives in three of his own. Picks up his 12th win of the year. I don't want to get my hopes up because we've been very streaky. I fully anticipate us to lose like six in a row now, but we have three in Atlanta. First game against the Braves is a 6-1 win. Wow. So we keep the hot streak going. We move to 74-71. and 71. Drew Romo, three hits, three runs knocked in. Gallo hits his 36th. Veen hits his 39th. Gallo's only hitting 195, but he's still putting up a 757 OPS. Blas now picks up the win. He moves to six and nine, six and a third shutout innings. Game two against the Braves is a two to one loss. And can we win two out of three in Atlanta? It's a big game right here. Big game right here. We lose. To, oh man! So we only give up four runs over two games, but we only score once. One game out of the wild card. We're a game behind the Marlins. We have three games against the Marlins left here. 
So we do have a shot as we uh, take on the Cubs now for three games at home. 14 to four win, big win. Clark Schmidt picks up the win, gives him his 15th victory of the season. With, a, with an even three ERA, Joey Gallo homers twice, scores four, drives in four. Joe Adele, two hits, four runs scored. Zach Veen, three hits, four RBIs. Do we get Ramirez back soon? Two weeks. All right, so I'll have him back before the end of the season, assuming that's necessary. Game two against the Cubs. It's a 9-3 loss. And the final game of the series against the Cubs... is a 4-3 to three loss. All right, so we've lost 2 out of 3 to Atlanta, 2 out of 3 to the Cubs, which puts us two games behind Miami. So essentially, we need to sweep Miami here to, to get... So we had three games at Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh isn't very good, 64-86. and 86, So we need those three games. Then we've got the Padres for three, then the Marlins. So we really... We need to go 6-3. and three. I would say at a bare minimum six and three in these in these nine games. So let's see how game one goes at Pittsburgh. That one hurts. A six five loss. Game two. A five two win. So we're seventy eight and seventy eight now. Or seventy six and seventy six. Apostle hits his eighteenth home run of the year. Adele homers, McKinstry homers. Dunn picks up his eighth win. All right, how do we do in the game three against Pittsburgh? We need this one badly. Four nothing victory. Veen hits his 48, 41st home run of the year. Drew Romo homers twice. Clark Schmidt, 16 and four. He very well could be the Cy Young winner. Um, hang on just a sec. All right, we are back. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to deal with some work stuff while I do this. So we are. How far out? We are two games out of a wild card spot. Two games behind the Cubs, or one game behind the Cubs, two games behind the Marlins. So we've got three against San Diego, three against Miami, three against Oklahoma City. So we got nine games left. We probably need to go seven and two. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. So game number one at home against San Diego. It's a ten to seven loss. Game number two. Seven to two victory. So that's nice. Joey Gallo, two for four, up to 39 home runs. Glasnow goes four and a third, striking out 10. Medina, two and a third to pick up the win. So two games behind Miami. We need we need this. This game here is huge. Can we take two out of three against San Diego? We do. We win nine to eight, scoring. Okay, we have four in the ninth, but we still managed to win nine to eight. Two out of three against the Padres. Postal three hits. Gallo, three hits. Three runs scored. Lazardo doesn't pitch well. Medina picks up the win. Gonsolin, of course, gets hit hard. So now we are a game back still, I think. Two, how are we two games back? Oh, I don't know. So, we're two, so we need to take all three games from Miami here. We need to beat Miami in all three games. Let's see what happens in game one. We lose. We lose four to three. All right, so game two. This is the make or break. If we lose this, our season's over. And our season's over. So we are now four games out of the wild card. And that's it. Uh, do we get swept by Miami? We do. Yay, we get swept. Can we even finish 500? Oh, good. Ramirez is back now. Freaking wonderful. Uh, <laughs> what do, who do I send? I don't think it matters who I send down because our season's over. Uh, can we even send anybody down? Yeah, we can send a pitcher down. We'll send down Mercadier, I guess. Let's put Ramirez back in the lineup. All right, well, this season didn't go quite the way we would have wanted, and that's fine. And let's see how our final three games of the season go. We lose to Oklahoma City. 
We win, and can we finish 500? We do. Finish 81 and 81. So that is a huge, huge disappointment uh, as we finish 18 games worse than we were a year ago. Missed the wild card by four games. Um, and honestly, I mean, you look at our, our pitching. Our pitching actually got better. Uh, our pitching staff start ended up with the ninth best ERA in, in the National League. Um, defensive efficiency wasn't great. Zone rating was middle of the pack. Um, so, yeah, we finish with a loser. We finish 81 and 81. And we're going to take one more break, guys. Sorry. This is a series of really short clips. I'll be right back. All right. Let's get on to the end of the season stats, and then we will sim through the postseason. Uh, and then the live episode on Sunday looks like it's going to be an off-season episode, folks, which is a lot of fun because you guys can help me make my decisions. Uh, but yeah, so we finished 81 and 81. It's not ideal. Uh, I don't even really know how we finished 81 and 81, to be honest with you. I mean, our defense wasn't so bad that we were 81 and 81, but um, it was bad. So we finished, yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Our Pythag was 90 and 72, which makes sense. Had we finished 90 and 72, we make the postseason. We had a plus 100 uh, run differential, um, which was behind only Atlanta, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Um, incredibly unlucky in one-run games, 19 and 32. Um yeah, so it just uh, I, it was just an unlucky season. I mean, this is really, really bad. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? So we will bounce back next season, and next year will be even better. So let's take a look at... Well, we're going to look at the team, and, and, and we'll sim through the, the end of the, of the postseason, and then we'll kind of look at, you know, initially what, what our, our plans are for the postseason. So Clark Schmidt... I, very likely could win the National League Cy Young. He was absolutely fantastic. And to think we got him for um, almost nothing in our very first season, uh, I think he was part of the very first trade we made. Yeah, John, he was part of the John Gray deal. We traded John Gray, Michael Toglia, and Jared Horn for uh, Schmidt, King, and Otto. At the time, King was the big pickup. Um, Schmidt was the prospect, but uh, um, he has delivered. He's gotten better every year um, to this year where he was just fantastic. 0.4, you give up eight home runs, 183 innings pitching in cores. So uh, Clark Schmidt was wonderful. Uh, Justin Dunn really bounced back after a difficult first half of the season. Only finished 9-10, and 10, but still struck out 210 in 187 innings. Um 125 ERA plus, 4.1 war. So he was fine after April, really. 604 ERA in April, but really every month after that he was good. So uh, Justin Dunn slides in nicely. Uh, Jack Leiter, really, really, uh, I mean, he was, I, I mean, war-wise he was better. ERA plus, he was worse. He struck out more per nine, walked more. Gave up fewer home runs. I mean, I would say this is a natural progression. Pitched, and he's been he's won twelve games each of his, each of his first two seasons. Um, I, and I'll take it. I absolutely will take it. Glasnow, um, it, he was about the same, almost exactly the same pitcher he was a year ago. After that absolutely awful start, he actually ended up better. I mean, his ERA plus was higher. He struck out about the same. Walked the same. Home runs per nine were about the same. WHIP was actually lower. Than it was last year. He just got off to such a terrible start. Uh, 0-2 with an 8-1-4 ERA uh, through his first six starts. June and July, he was really good. August, September, he sort of uh, sort of leveled out a little bit. So, I mean, all in all, over the course of a year, he was fine. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is for him off in the off season. We'll have to talk about it. Uh, Lazardo wasn't. It was fine. I mean. Ended up with a 4.92 ERA in 13 starts. Uh, gave a few too many hits, but I mean he was average. He was average, and we gave up a shortstop that we likely aren't gonna that we likely weren't going to resign. So wish he could have been better, but he wasn't. Uh, Duplantier uh, had a really nice season for us after spending all of last uh, season in AAA. Edwin Diaz 
was up and down. Uh, looked like he had a couple of really good months, a couple of really bad months, just like everybody else. Yeah, his first two months was were really, really good. August was really good. August, or July was really good. August, he was 0-5 with an ERA of almost 15. And then in September, he was perfect. So I, I don't know. Go figure. And that was the problem. It was like if one pitcher, if half our pitching, half our pitching staff was pitching well and the other half was pitching poorly. We just, we never got into a groove where we had one month where everything clicked. Uh, Reed Detmers is a perfect example of that. He was perfect in April and then just went downhill every month. Dominguez um, was fine. I mean, he struck out 105 batters in 67 innings. So, I mean, I think between Diaz and Dominguez, we're fine there. Maybe a little bit more than I can afford to pay, um, but that's something we'll deal with in the offseason. Ben Gass, um looks like he had a decent final month of the year. Yeah. Eight and a third, two runs, nine strikeouts. He'll be a starter next year, and and we'll just see. We'll just run with it and see what happens. Jackson Bennett uh, was good in limited time. He may also be a starter next year. Uh, he's twenty six, so we really got to see what we have there. Doyle and Medina were average, and you know I could take them or leave them at this point. Uh, lineup: uh, Zach Veen, just an absolutely fantastic second season. Forty four home runs, one hundred eleven runs knocked in. Uh, 1025 OPS, 5.4 war. He was fantastic. Wesniak had a great rookie campaign. Got him based at almost a 400 clip, 33 home runs. Slowed down a bit in the second half of the season, but still had a good year. Drew Romo, a really, really good sophomore campaign with the bat. Jose Ramirez struggled this year uh, compared to last year when he won the MVP, so it'll be nice to hopefully get a bounce back year from him. Uh, McKinstry had another good year for us, but he could be gone. Um, he could be gone uh, this this season or this off season as he's going to start to get expensive and we have other options at second base. Uh, Gallo, we have a very interesting decision to make with Joey Gallo. Uh, he's due $25 million for one more season um, after this one. So 2026 will be the last year of his contract. He said 40 home runs every year with us. I mean, giving us exactly what we anticipated we'd get, which is a low 200 batting average and 40 home runs. Uh, but it might be time to move on with uh, from him with Drew Jones coming back if we can find a taker. Uh, Kiner Falefa will likely be our starting second baseman next year. Uh, he hit okay, um, but we're going to need somebody at second base, I believe, uh, if we let McKinstry go. Shirt and Apostle has been fantastic in his role as a backup corner infielder with some power. Um, Joe Adele, he's another one who had a, a, a bit of a difficult season compared to last year, but still, you know, there's still potential there, so I'm not anywhere near ready to give up on him. Uh, Nick Ahmed was really quite good after signing with us. Uh, offensively, put up a 1.3 war, and defensively was very, very good. Um... Um, Jamison Hanna continues hit over 300 again for his fourth straight season uh, with us so he's perfect as a backup outfielder again might be a little bit too rich for our blood next year we'll see Sanchez, Janau, and uh, Enrique we're probably going to have to move on from Kike at this point um, we may have to just eat his contract I'm not entirely sure so uh, I'm going to go ahead and sim now through the rest of the postseason. We'll come back, we'll look at the champions, and then we will uh, we'll figure out what the next steps are. Okay, we have hit the end of the season, the end of the, the postseason, I guess. Uh, we finished with a score of 437, uh, which is an average score. I don't pay much attention to that. but uh, So let's take a look at the standings playoffs uh playoff tree so the ugh, god this is so tedious to see the padres or the dodgers win it every year at least we had a new entrance and the entrant and the the seattle mariners uh made it to the world series but lost to the dodgers who have won again in fact let's take a quick look at this uh his, not team history league history and yeah, the Dodgers have won. <laughs> Dodgers have won five of the five of the or okay, four of the five World Series in this uh, in this world, with the Indians winning in 2022. But the Dodgers just finished a three-peat. Um, of course they did. So let's see what we have. Season goals. Uh, he wasn't happy with our performance. Obviously, neither was I. Uh, wasn't happy with our stolen bases. I don't care about that. 
Um, he was fine with our attendance. He's unhappy with our performance. He wants us to re-sign Joey Gallo, which um, likely won't happen. Uh, but he wants us to achieve a winning record. Our budget is $140 million, uh, which means we have zero monies. Uh, we have to cut about $15 million just to uh, get back to what our budget is. So what that means is uh, we're probably saying goodbye to Zach McKinstry. We are probably saying goodbye to Ali Sanchez. Uh, we are likely saying goodbye to either Dominguez or Diaz. Uh, and we are likely going to try to say goodbye to Joey Gallo, even though they want us to re-sign him. I don't know that that is in our best interest when we have Drew Jones ready to come up. <sighs> yeah. I guess let's take a look at did list the top prospects, right? Yeah, top 100 prospects. Uh, we have Jim Denny is number 10, but that's it. Uh, our minor league system is third. We got Guess eighth, Denny seventeenth, uh, Drew Jones is twenty ninth, Negron Julio Negron, who is I believe an international guy, is fifty seventh, and then Luke Lito is thirty uh, is sixty fourth. So we have some good prospects. Um, we'll figure out where they're going to be uh, next episode, but I imagine uh, first thing we got to do is put Lito on the forty man. Just make that move now. So. Uh, Cademon Parker, who was our first-round pick this year in AA, was quite good. Uh, he'll start in AAA next season and maybe with the big club before the end of the season. Same with Luke Lito. I had a really, really solid offensive year. We'll probably start in AA. Uh, Drew Jones will likely get the start in center field um, next season uh, if we're able to move on from Gallo. Uh, so we have a lot of young players on our team or in our in our system. Carter Smith is another one who is just about ready. Um, he may get a... So we may have a, a very different looking pitching staff next season. I suspect that Leiter will be back. I suspect that Dunn will be back just because of what they're making. Um, Glasnow might be back. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he has any value. Let's just look really quickly. Yeah, he does. Okay. So um, I don't know how much value, but there's some there, you know, and we could move him. And if we just want a straight salary dump, we could do it. All right. So there is some, some, uh, some value in, in uh, Glasnow. What about in, um, I, I mean, I would imagine there's, there's not that I want to give up Schmidt, but with what he's asking for, what, where's there, is there value in Clark Schmidt? Yeah, same deal. So I, it looks like we can probably get something done for both if we wanted to. I don't know that I necessarily want to. It, it depends on what we need to do with some of these other ones. And then we'll just quickly look at Gallo. Yeah, there's there's no value there. No one wants him. And, and, and we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it to pay somebody else or to pay Joey Gallo $12 million to play for somebody else or pay him 25 to play for us. You know, that's that's the decision we're going to have to have to make here. So we have a lot of decisions we're going to have to make in the next episode, but that is the next episode. Um, guys, I appreciate you watching. appreciate you hanging out. Obviously, drop a, as always, drop a subscribe here on, on the GM Games channel. Go over to the Discord, follow them over there. Uh, great content. Uh, a lot of fun stuff to, to, to watch if you're a big uh, sports sim guy like me. And obviously head over to Around the World Sports. Drop me a subscribe over there. Um, yeah. And and next up will be, I, I think I am going, well, I don't know. Sunday's, Sunday is is Father's Day. So I, 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 don't, I don't know that I'm going to be doing a live stream this weekend. What I might do is um, post the off-season episode uh, Friday or Friday record it Friday and post it Sunday so it'll be there uh, but it's Father's Day and I want to do nothing on Father's Day and that's my right as a father so at any rate guys appreciate you watching as always and we will talk to everybody soon bye bye